Hey, what's up everybody? I hope everyone's having a blessed day and I hope you're putting your eyes on the Lord and you're willing to fear Him. Because I promise you, if you fear Him, it will make you stronger in His righteousness. And it's, you know, sometimes people say, why do, why do we have to fear God when God tells us not to fear anything? Because if we don't fear the Lord, then we start to drift and we start to lose to obeying His commandments and obeying His Word. But if we fear His Word and we are cautious with the things we do in our life, it will make us stronger, stronger Christians. And I know sometimes it can be a struggle. But the only one, the only one that's ever going to help us is Christ Jesus. He is the strength of our life. We need to walk by humility and destroy our pride because our pride brings nothing but giving glory to Christ Jesus is all. And I look at the world today. I look at the struggles we have and how many people are lost. And we as Christians need to get up and fight for what's right to go out there and spread the gospel. And today, uh, you know, I was looking for a chapter to read inside the Bible and God told me to go to Philippians. I don't know why, but God is God, and I'm going to listen to what He says. And He told me to go to Philippians chapter 1, and I read chapter 1. And man, just to see how powerful Paul was, and how God used Paul so much. And you think about the past of Paul, how Paul was killing Christians, persecuting them, throwing rocks at them until they die. And his name was Saul before he became Paul. And you look at the things that he has done. And we say, how, 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 how has he been forgiven for the things he's done and all these evil things? And the thing is, is God is not of the past. He is of the future. He's just going to see how your heart changes. He's going to see how your life turns around from your pleasures and sexual perversion or drugs or alcohol. That is what God cares about. And a lot of times we, and I see a lot of people that I talk to Jesus about and they say, oh, well, Jesus won't forgive me for the things I've done. But look at the story of Paul. That tells us right there that Jesus will forgive all sins. If you're willing to change. But before we get started in the Philippians chapter 1 today, I wanted to ask if y'all that are listening today, are you thinking the same thing? Are you thinking that God is not going to forgive you for your sins because you've done so much bad? Are you drifting from Christ because you think Christ is not going to help you because you're too evil? Or are you having struggles in your family? Are you departing from righteousness? Is your faith wavering? Let me tell you something today. The power of prayer and the power of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're willing to do all of those three, your faith will be restored. The sin that you had that was a lot may be forgiven. And if you are having struggles in your family, God will get you through. So I ask all of us to go in prayer. And please pray with me. Because prayer is what keeps us from the temptation of Satan. Lord Jesus, we don't deserve forgiveness. I especially don't deserve any forgiveness for the things I've done. I pray, Lord, for every heart and soul and mind today that is here listening. I pray for every heart and soul and mind in their families and around them in their schools and their communities. Because, Lord, there's a lot of lost people. And, Lord, we as Christians need to set an example. We have to fight and we have to be willing to go out there and share your word, even if it means death. Because, Lord, we know even if we die, we'll be in a better place. We know, Lord, that you're coming soon and help us to be ready and keep fighting for your name and never quit and give us the strength to fight, Lord to let the Holy Spirit flow through us and to guide others unto you. Lord, work through us. You say 
Jesus, you say in the Bible, Lord, that he is greater that is in you than that who is in the world. That you, Jesus, is greater than us inside and who is in the world. You say in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, Lord, what profit is a man if he shall gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Lord, we understand that it's not of the world, but it's of you and help people to start understanding that. Because, Lord, judgment is coming soon. And, Lord, your vengeance is coming soon. And, Lord, help us to preach the gospel so souls may be changed by you. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Rejoice. Rejoice. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord, in the Holy Ghost and the Father. Amen. So I ask all of you, if you can, please turn to Philippians chapter one and i read this today and i'm going to teach you about uh, uh philippians chapter one if all of y'all can turn to philippians chapter one and we read in this verse about paul and how paul has magnified to christ now what is he meaning by this and this he says and if everyone can turn to philippians chapter one verse 20 we're going to read verse 20 all the way to the end of the chapter so we're going to be reading 10 verses, all right? And it, and it says, Christ is magnified through Paul. The awesome thing about this title is that God is even going to magnify with a sinner. That Christ is a magnet inside of us. That we are sinners and we make mistakes. But through Christ, there's, there's forgiveness, there's love. There's mercy. And a lot of times we struggle in our, in our Christian life and we say, where is God? Why is he not helping us in this midst? Why is he not guiding us? It's maybe because you're not letting Christ be magnified in you. I promise you Christ will be magnified in you if you're willing to surrender. If you're willing to let God be your strength. If you're willing to give glory to him. But y'all, we got to get rid of the pride first. It's the biggest problem. There's a reason why God hates pride, because pride is of yourself. And it's not of God. So let's start off in verse 20, and I want you to read the amazing words of Paul. And of course, the amazing words of God. And we see in verse 20, it says, According to my earnest expectation, in my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. For I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, all for you, furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundance in Jesus Christ. For me, by my coming to you again, only let your conversation be as it is becometh. The gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. That we stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident, took in a perdition, but to you a salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which we saw in him, and not fear to be in him. Sorry about that. Give me one second. Sorry about that. My dog went nuts. There you go. The devil's trying to get me to stop the preaching the gospel but anyways we just read the last verse and we see in this that God tells us that we have to be willing to die for his sake are you willing to die for Christ 
Are you willing to spend your whole entire rest day for Christ? Are you willing to spend time in his word, in prayer, in supplication, preaching his gospel, even if it takes time out of your day of what you want to do? You got to remember that the heart lives forever. What you do for Christ lives forever. But also not only what you do for Christ, but with the unbelieving soul that will live forever but in death but the most amazing part about this part here is that Paul is so joyful and faithful even if he suffered look at this verse I want you all to look at this verse in verse 27 it says, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that we stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now you see in this verse, it says, Paul says, only let your conversation be as it becometh of the gospel of Christ. The world is going to come at you and show you bad pictures that you shouldn't be looking at. You want to get into conversations that are evil, maybe about gossiping over us up behind somebody's back, or maybe talking about inappropriate things. Any conversation of this world is going to overflow, overflow your mind, and it's the temptation is, of Satan is going to win. But if we are willing to surrender, if we are willing to have the mind of Christ and the spirit of God through the gospel, we will succeed. If you see in this verse, it says at the end that whether I come and see you or else absent, I may hear of your affairs, that we stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. We as Christians and brothers and sisters in Christ, we all need to be one spirit. But we're all different in different ways, sharing the gospel through Christ Jesus, even if it means death and always making sure that we stay away from evil conversations. The devil is going to use people of this world to draw you into evil conversations. It might be about sex, which is very, very badly a conversation in this world today. It might be about drugs, or maybe somebody's offering you a vape. I was working uh, last week and somebody was offering me a vape or some kind of drug they were offering me it. and I said no because we need to be willing to say no to the world and yes to God who cares what the world thinks if the government attacks us let it be that if we are persecuted if we have to die for Christ so be it good enough we'll be in a better place anyways we'll be away from this broken world and the awesome thing about this is that Christ is magnified through us that he gives us the joy and the faith and you look at verse 25 and it says in having this confidence I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith when you have confidence through Jesus Christ it makes you so much as a stronger Christian because you're telling God that he that you know he has a plan for your life if you have confidence in preaching preaching you know that God is going to give you the power to preach if you have confidence in prayer you know that God will answer it if you have confidence in reading his word you know that you will understand it. all these things we have to be willing to say yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord all for his glory I am a sinner just as bad as everyone else Even as the unbelievers, I'm just as bad. But what Christ accomplished on the cross, He's changed my life. He's changed my family's life. And He's changed me. The question is today, are you going to let God magnify your life? Or are you going to let this world be your magnet? 
If you let Christ be your magnet, I promise you, man, that magnet will never go away. It's never going away. <laughs> if you let God magnify your life. Paul did it so we can do the same thing. I ask that we all go into prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you every day for your eternal mercy that we don't deserve. I pray for any soul or heart today that is their faith is wavering and their joy is wavering. Help them to keep them away from evil conversations, Lord. Help them to have confidence in you when, when they struggle, that we are willing to spread the gospel for your sake. And who cares what the world thinks? And Lord, it doesn't matter if we die or if we live, Lord, it's all for your name, it's all for your glory, and help us to remember that because, Lord, you love us and you promise us eternal life. Satan wants to use this world and the pleasures to seem like it's the saving thing, but it's a lie, it's manipulative, it's deceiving. Lord, help us to be open. Help us to pray constantly. Help us to stay in your word constantly. Help us to preach constantly. Because, Lord, we know if we do, you'll be there, right there, to guide us, to keep us from temptation. Lord, I pray for all families, all souls tonight, and all hearts, that you guide them in the direction they need to go. Lord, help them to stay in your word and the preaching and prayer. Help them to stay confident and faithful and joyful to stay away from this evil world and the pleasures and everything it offers. Lord, that we learn from this in Philippians chapter 1, verse 20 through 30, that let you be magnified in us so we might, may become strong. And I ask this in your name and the Holy Ghost and the Father. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Remember, the Lord has a plan for you. Never let Satan get you in a dark place and put you in a temptation. Because I promise you, hell is very real and he wants you to go there. He wants you to go right into there and spend inter eternity in hell and damnation and fire. It says in the Bible that there is no water in hell. It's just flames, and torture, and sorrow. I promise you, deep down in everyone's heart today that is on this earth does not want to go there. They might say they want to go there. But deep down in their life. Remember, guys, God has offered and he will magnify you if you let him. Remember it says it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. We should be grateful that God is still having mercy on us because all the things we have done are so evil. And I want you to, I want you all to listen to this verse that I'm gonna to read to you before I leave you all today. And it says, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him but also to suffer, to suffer for his sake. God bless y'all.